And Yohosh, there is, though, sometimes a penalty for speaking up, for speaking out. You must deal with that all the time. Never. <laughs> um, yeah, look, there, I think there always is. There's, there's always a price that goes along with speaking up. Um, but, you know, it, it should never stop us from doing it. And I think... But, you but know, do you think about it? Well, I mean, you're in this incredible position on the <laughs> AFL executive, very challenging uh, set of circumstances. And, and you are expected to be a voice for all sorts of things and people and there's a lot of expectation. Do you pause for thought before you, you, you say what you think? Oh, look, I think I'd be lying if I said I didn't. I mean, certainly you have to pick your fights. You do have to choose what you're going to burn capital on because you know that once you've burnt some, it takes a while to build that capital back up before you can then take on the next issue. So you do have to be, I think, judicious about how you use your voice. I think, um, you know, I think when I was much younger, um, you know, I thought I could change the world and I was you know, determined that I was going to do that. And then you meet reality and you suddenly realise that it takes more than just your passion and your voice. It takes, it takes a collection of a community. It takes so many things. So I think you do pay a price. And what I've learned over time is that it is, it, it is your friends, it is sometimes even your enemies who will be pointing out things to you that you need to know, that you need to prepare yourself for next time. I think that, um, you know, I've also decided the things that I am always going to speak on and always going to speak up about. Racism is one of those for me. And, um, I, and I think that, you know, those conversations, Grace and I were talking earlier, you know, you can't, deal with a problem you don't talk about. Mm. You can't address an issue that you don't articulate. That's why the silence issue is so significant. It is silence that does hold us back, but we also have to look after ourselves and each other because those people who do speak out, who do want to challenge, do pay a high price. I have paid a price, but there's so many other people in our community who've paid a much higher price for their advocacy than I ever will, I, I feel. I, I heard you say that you considered not accepting your your recognition as South Australia's South Australia, South Australia's Australian of the Year. I mean, what what penalty have you paid for, for speaking out? What, what, what happens when you do? Oh, you know, trolling and, you know, um, there's always other people who will do it better than you ever can. There are always people who are just going to have a difference of opinion and I think we've gone from robust debate to some quite nasty behaviour and Alexander was talking about that earlier. I don't think that's helpful. You know, I know my mother always used to say to me, um, you never look good making someone else look bad. Like, you know, I want to be just really focused. Doesn't mean it doesn't hurt doesn't mean that, um, you know, there's some tears in the background. Actually, I'd cry in front of anyone. So um, <laughs> you know, anyone who's worked with me would have seen that. Um, but I, I do think that there is a mental health impact. There is a limit to how much you can absorb. And I do think, you know, kindness has become an underrated quality. I think, you know, words of kindness, the text messages, all of those little things are important, but I think what is more important is that um, we have we we hold really dear the ability to live in a world and in a society where it's still okay to talk about things that are hard, and it's important to challenge things that are still not right. Okay, mm -hmm. let's take our next question. It's a video yeah. from Richard Bentley in Marlin, South Australia. My question is to Tanya Hosh. Shouldn't the AFL be taking a leading role in helping clubs deal with racism and setting a path forward? Clearly being humble it doesn't coincide with leading an AFL club. I would like to see Heritia Lumumba, Colin Kaepernick, Romy Muir and Nicky Winmar at the AFL Grand Final coin toss this year. Sometimes pictures speak louder than words. Before we go to Tanya, Warren Mundine. Look, uh, yeah, the pictures do speak louder than words. Uh, and I'm a great believer in, in symbolism, does play a very important role. Uh, you know, if, if you go into a room and there's no black faces in there, that, that sends you a message. And then you go in there and you see a room with black faces in there, that sends you a message as well about being welcomed and stuff. So, so it's not a bad idea that you... 
uh, I... Um, but uh, doesn't the AFL need more than symbols at this point? That, well, they do need more than symbols, but I'm just not sa I'm saying that you don't underestimate symbols. Uh, symbols are so important. Uh, you look at Anzac Day and, and you look at a whole wide range of other things about symbolism. Uh, the important thing for the AFL and, uh, is that they do have some serious problems to look at. And they not only need to look at them, they need to do some actions about them and start cleaning some of this stuff up. Uh, I, you know, Can they do that while Eddie Maguire is still in charge of a club, do you think? Look, uh, whether, whether Eddie and Maguire or Eddie Maguire is there or not, I, to me, is not the important part. The important part is because it's not all just about Eddie, <coughs> you know. I know Eddie thinks it's all about Eddie, but it's not all about Eddie. <laughs> it's, uh, no comment. <laughs> no comment. Well, you can't. It's, uh, but the important thing, because it goes further than Eddie. You know, if, we, if you look at Collingwood, I remember as a young kid uh, dealing with some of the issues they said back in the 80s and 70s and, 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 and that, where the, uh, how the players... Have, you know, I talked to a lot of Aboriginal players and the things that have been said to them and how they've been treated and, and the abuse. And, and even, though, even though I was a, a terrible footballer and I never made the top grade, I remember playing in park football and that and the things that were said to us to put off put you off your game and and the abuse and the racist stuff and you were getting back to your point about being you know you're male you've got to be stoic and you just got to keep your mouth shut and just get on with the game and, and not do uh, you you can't and that left a lot of people broken and you and you see a lot of uh, and you go back in the history look at Jack Marsh who played cricket back in the, uh, the 1920s and that it totally broke the guy and he ended up becoming an alcoholic and he was actually beaten to death in a pub in, in Orange and you, you just can't let these things go on. You've got to confront them, you've got to deal with them, you've got to talk about them and we're not just get caught up with just thinking that, oh, we can get rid of one person, that's going to resolve everything. Sure, but uh, Tanya Hosh, this is a club that says it wants to deal with this and resolve it. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if you honestly believe it can do that with Eddie Maguire at the top. I think that... Um, and I want to take Eddie out of it, and I will answer your question, but what I would like to say first is that... Football clubs, sporting clubs in general, are made up of not just the athletes, but the fans and the staff and a whole range of people. And the thing about this week and what's gone on, I, I really wish that we were just using the R word more. I wish we were talking about racism instead of Eddie. Um, because that is actually the point. And this is the same board that commissioned the report in the first place. And, you know, racism is pervasive, it is everywhere, and the work that Collingwood has committed itself to is important because what it says is this is not pretty, but we've got to face up to it. And, you know, you can't solve a problem you don't talk about. And I think that dealing with racism is bigger than just one person. Um, that when Eddie has foreshadowed that he's leaving the club yeah. at the end of this year, dealing with racism in that club will be an ongoing issue because whenever you decide to deal with racism, there is no quick fix. It's not a matter of just changing the people at the table. Mm. When you're talking about systemic racism, and that's why, you know, I am pleased to be able to be on this panel tonight, is because we've got to get back to having the conversation about racism. In Australia, I feel like we very often <coughs> only have a little bit of the conversation. And then we wait for something else that happens and we're all outraged. One of the questions I often ask myself is, all these people are so outraged about this incident. Where are you the other 364 days of the year? Because racism is all around us all the time. And I really want to honour um, the Aboriginal board member of Collingwood Football Club, Jodie Sizer. She's a close personal friend, but she's got enormous expertise. She's got the lived experience that Grace is talking about. She has played a huge role in making the club face up to these things. And until you do that, there's no addressing it. So whether Eddie is at the table or not, 
I know there are people who are going to do the work.